So this, this next video, and you send it to me as well, and I saw it a little bit before that, and I said, I'm going to save this for our next live stream. Uh, we, we know um, the Perrys, right? The Perrys uh, did a whole video, Is the Seventh Heaven Church a Cult? They brought Mr. Thunder on the screen to talk about the Adventist Church. You know, they had a number of things to say. The Great Controversy Worldview. And that is define it, define by it. the writings of LNG White. I mean, they spent an hour and nine minutes pretty much bashing the church. This is actually the second video where they did this. Um, the ignorance was all over the place. And I did do an entire reaction video debunking some of the views here. But again, you this is very right. common. There's very common. If you go on the internet right now, the Adventist Church is bashed and call all kind of names, cults, and everything else. Very few non Seventh Day Adventists has anything positive to say about the Seventh Day Adventist people. And and I'll tell you what, knowing the Seventh Day Adventist Church, been in there for 15 years, and my family's is all Seventh Day Adventists, uh, I can tell you over, I would say over 90% of what they say in are lies. The things that are truth, even those truth are spin in such a way to make us look bad. Uh, and I'm not saying this because I'm trying to justify the church. And I'm not saying this because we have no flaws, we have no issues. We do. <laughs> we got issues, we got problems. But one thing we are not uh, is a cult. One thing we are not are some people who don't believe in Jesus. One thing we are not is because some of our belief system is different than the rest of evangelicals. Doesn't necessarily mean we are some crazy, weird, uh, Ellen White worshippers type of stuff. These things are not true. These are all false claims. But I found a lady that really, <laughs> she, she blew my mind. I mean, she literally blew my mind. Her YouTube channel, and I want you guys to go and support her content. Her YouTube channel is Woman of Faith. Guys, I'm going to link her channel and you're going to see why. I'm going to be quiet. She's going to talk for 10 minutes. She's going to rebuke. And again, she is not a Seventh-day Adventist. It's very obvious when you begin to listen to her. But her understanding, her wisdom, and how balanced of a Christian perspective she has, that blows my mind. Let's, let me share this with you, and let's share some thoughts when we finish here. Let's take a listen. Hey, got my honey and lemon today. Bit of a cold. Mm. All right, let's go. The popular podcast with married couple Preston and Jackie Hill Perry have done a couple of episodes now with a Dr. Eric Mason. They are making suggestions. Actually, scratch that. They are asking the question. Scratch that too. They are outright accusing the Seventh Day Adventist Church of being a cult. They are not mincing their words. They are making very bold statements against SDAs. And this, of course, has caused lots of uproar within the SDA community. If you didn't know, Preston Perry and his wife, Jackie Hill Perry, are best known for being poets from the well-known Passion for Christ Ministries. Here's a picture of me posing with them in London. Dr. Eric Mason is best known as a founder and senior pastor of a church called Epiphany Fellowship. All three are authors, have huge followings on socials and are very well known in the black Christian community. OK, so the statement they are making is that SDAs are a cult. That's not very nice, is it, guys? Quote from Wikipedia. A cult is a group which is typically led by a charismatic and self-appointed leader. Could Jesus be classified as self-appointed? Who tightly controls its members, requiring unwavering devotion to a set of beliefs and practices which are considered deviant outside the norms of society. Jesus says they are not of the world, even as I am not of it. So definitely considered outside norms of society. So far, Christianity as a whole is looking like a cult, if we're going with the definition, to be honest. Now, when you continue reading what a cult is on Wikipedia, it says it can be defined by its unusual religious, spiritual or philosophical beliefs and rituals, or its common interest in a particular person, object or goal. So I'm not completely naive as to where they're going with it. 
unusual beliefs, a common interest in a particular person. All Protestant denominations have slightly different beliefs, otherwise there would be no need for different denominations, would there? But in terms of Christianity as a whole, the SDAs have some beliefs that the rest of mainstream Christendom don't have. For example, they observe the seventh day Sabbath, they believe that Jesus' second coming won't be a secret rapture, but will be visible to all. They don't believe that you go straight to heaven when you die, but that you rest in peace and you sleep until Jesus returns, etc, etc. So different, yes, unorthodox, maybe, but everything they believe is found in scripture as in the Bible. They're not believing that we were once aliens, which is a non-biblical belief. They are interpreting what the Bible says literally. Now, I guess you could argue that the cult leader, Jim Jones and his church, based their religion on the Bible. The people's temple, which is what he called it, lasted about 20 or so years. And Jim Jones and the member of his inner circle planned and orchestrated a mass murder suicide. So if we're making comparisons as to what a cult looks like, I wouldn't say that a worldwide organisation which started in the 1800s as part of the Reformation movement with a baptised membership of over 22 million people, a missionary presence in over 215 countries and territories who operate over 7,000 schools, numerous hospitals and a humanitarian aid organisation is even in the same category as a cult. It's not surprising that SDAs are offended. Yes, they believe that Ellen White was a prophet and follow her writings, but I've seen many prophets pop up within Christianity. Just check YouTube. Seems like anyone can call themselves prophet or prophetess these days, sharing their prophetic messages from God online. So the fact that SDAs believe a certain person to be a prophet isn't too unusual, is it? The Bible lets us know how we distinguish between false and real prophets, false and real doctrines. Ellen White's writings very much point to Jesus the Messiah. I mean, it's not a salvational issue. You believe she's a prophet or you don't. As long as SDAs believe in salvation through Jesus alone, then it doesn't really matter. Anywho, if you're here and you're wondering if SDAs are a cult and want to know more about their beliefs, they do have an official website which will let you know that they unequivocally believe that Jesus is God and righteousness and justification comes from him and him alone. Despite the false claims that you might see on the Perry's Instagram page, which says SDAs don't believe that Christ is fully God. I think they're going to regret getting in Reverend Thunder as a guest speaker. He left the SDA church because he clearly has the wrong understanding. It makes sense that he would leave if that's what he's understood to be true. It's just not true. That's the problem. But check out this video. I don't know these guys, but they break it down in detail, all of the points raised on the Perry's podcast, and they say it much better than I could, or a disgruntled, clearly confused ex-SDA member could. I think people who tarnish everyone with the same brush should be careful. Of course there are SDAs who will have extreme beliefs and practices, some which may even go against what the denomination as a whole believes. But then, so does every Christian denomination. You even have some Christian pastors preaching from the book of Enoch, in their sermons. Slight dig to Eric Mason there. There probably are some SDAs who put the writings of Ellen White above the writings of Jesus. And of course, they shouldn't. But they are the exception, not the rule. If you come against a faith movement or religion, you have to remember that there are individuals who make up that religion. I don't agree with many of the Catholic beliefs, but I wouldn't be so brazen as to jump on a video and start cutting off all Catholics. I have Catholic friends and people that I've worked with. I wouldn't want to offend and upset them. What if God wants to use me to introduce those Catholics to the truth about what the word says? Plus, if I was to shout them down saying all Catholics put Mary above Jesus, well, that wouldn't be accurate, would it? Some Catholics do put Mary above Jesus, but not all of them do. I wonder what the reason was behind the decision to air this conversation. Perhaps it was a marketing strategy. Preston Perry and Dr. Mason both have apologetics books on sale, so perhaps it was to draw attention to that? Sell some books? Although I think they might have misunderstood what apologetics is. It's supposed to be defending your beliefs, not attacking others' beliefs. I'm speculating because I really don't get it. Their conduct as Christians was shocking to me. This wasn't a, hmm, isn't this interesting what these guys believe type conversation. No, this was an outright attack. 
They were mocking, discrediting, accusing and disrespecting the Adventist church and their interpretation of scripture. Like my title says, they're waging war. But why? Who was this video for? Was it for SDAs to let them know they've got it all wrong? If you as a Christian truly believe that SDAs or any other religion are in error about what they believe, is this the way you should address it? Is this kind of conversation going to bring some enlightenment for them? Is it going to lead them to the truth? That clearly wasn't the goal here. So was it for non-SDAs then to tell them to stay away from the SDA cult in case they get you? There was a recent mass baptism of 300,000 baptised into the Adventist church reported by CBN. They obviously don't think they're a cult. Perhaps this was the first of a series of videos in which they're going to cuss out every single faith which is different to theirs. Who's next, I wonder? Jehovah Witness? Muslims? Here's a question. What should our response be to people who believe differently to us? Do we call them out as heretics? Do we take an us versus them stance? Do we wage war and make them our enemies, ridicule them and point out the error of their ways? Perhaps you think this is the response we should have as Christians. Perhaps freedom of choice and freedom of religion is really getting phased out. It's this kind of division that's caused wars, persecution, hate crimes, even if we do see other faiths as our enemies or an enemy of God and his truth. The Bible tells us we should love our enemies. Why does God say that? Because those individuals who have different beliefs, they're still God's children. God loves them. Jesus came and died for those SDAs and those Jehovah Witnesses and those Muslims, even those atheists. Even if they have got it wrong, really wrong, he still loves them. He still died for them. Yes, of course, there's consequences to your choices, but he ultimately wants all his children to come to the truth. So how will they come to the truth? Who will show them? It's supposed to be us Christians. But where is the love? Where is the desire to save souls and lead the lost to Jesus? If you genuinely believe you have the truth and someone else doesn't, instead of tearing them down and mocking them, think, what can I do to help them, to save them? God may want to use you to teach them. Let your light shine before others so God may be glorified. Jesus is coming soon. Instead of this boasty, yeah, I'm good, I'm holier than thou, I know better than you attitude. You're wrong, I'm right, I'm so wise, no one can teach me nothing because I know everything. Can we have love? Can we have humility? Can we remember what Christ came to do? Can we remember what he wants us to do and how to do it? The enemy is at work within our churches. Let's not join him in his work in these last days. That's all I have to say about that. Wow. That's all I can say. All I can say is wow. Yeah, I, I, yeah. That, that right there set this girl apart from a lot of the critics that I hear of Seven Day Adventists. There, uh, there are a few, very few Christian can speak like that. Is rooted in love and humility and understanding. That right there is, is, is just very, very, very special. I appreciate that. Yeah. You know, one of the reasons why I've been doing videos like this is because of the criticism wage against the seventh Adventist church it's kind of like it gave me a reason to have a youtube channel but uh if christians were acting like this i probably wouldn't have a channel i'll be like okay we understand each other but again uh, but i also want to proclaim the message that we have we do believe uh, we have a message that the world needs to hear and we need to proclaim the three angels messages but um <clears throat> this is balance man i mean what's your thought uh tim go ahead oh this was good and I don't see anything that you said that was a flaw. You know, I think that, you know, to, there are a lot of people I hear called the Jehovah Witness a cult, Catholics a cult, and there are, there are things, but I, I'll never let that, I don't ever want that word to come across my lips and point at somebody. Yeah. And I would, when people say it to us or about, our faith and our denomination um i pray for them because they're just wrong and i i pray because they 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 need to know the truth 
they yeah. they will they will criticize they will continually criticize us but they'll never study with us they'll mm -hmm. never see what we see and that's sad because yeah you know i i believe that we have the light mm -hmm. on so many things subjects because because yeah. just because i see the other denominations struggle and believe i mean when i make comments on your videos these people write me a book on how i'm wrong and <laughs> i know and it's... in their book i read through it and i don't even i can't even comment back because there's so many errors in what they've said that yeah. it's like you can't you don't even know what to start on yeah yeah one it's, one guy yeah. was talking about how you know the mother of the 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 12 the woman in in revelation is the mo is mother mary and you know and they don't understand the symbolic mm -hmm. You know the symbolism of revelation and that the mother and in prophecy is a woman is church it's a oh church. My, oh boy. I mean, and it tells me that there's a there's just a lot of they it's get this stuff because they hear it from people who preach these things wrong mm -hmm. and they 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 preach and i know i i've proven this that these preachers they start browsing through and picking out verses and they they build uh you know they build doctrine on these things and they don't even understand the chapter it's like i hear so many people talk about the sabbath well romans romans you know paul said in romans don't hey, judge people. yeah don't <laughs> judge people on what day you know on yeah and it has nothing to do with the sabbath not nothing. even close. <laughs> the whole book of Romans has nothing to do with the Sabbath. It's not even mentioned. About, the word Sabbath is not even mentioned once in the book of Romans. Right. He's talking in Romans. He's talking to the new Jewish or the new Gentile Christians, the not listening to the new Jewish Christians. You don't have to keep feast days and fasting and all that. He's saying if you want to, you can. But don't judge people on what days they keep to eat and what days they keep not to eat. Mm. And <laughs> case closed. Oh, we could go. We could. I could knock him down like bowling pins right now. Yeah, he got yeah. started. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I again. Um, God bless her. God bless her and her channel. Go and support her work. Again, I'm gonna put a link in the description for you. She she deserves some respect. And when she gave the description of of cults, I'm like, yeah, we are not even close. <laughs> we are not even close to describing to being described as a cult uh we know that's a lie but the people that are saying it they really believe they're telling the truth but 